Is America headed towards civil war, as many fear, or at least a division into two countries, one red, one blue? In September, the Center for Politics at the University of Virginia asked voters if the situation in America makes them favor blue or red states seceding from the union to form their own separate country. 41 percent of Biden voters, 52 percent of Trump voters at least somewhat agreed. If you think this is far-fetched, know this. Since 1945, the number of nations in the world has tripled, many of them the result of secession. There are currently about 60 secessionist movements worldwide, which leads me to this week's survey question at Smirconish.com. Fifty years from now, will the U.S. map be the same as today? My next guest has researched the topic, written a book of speculative nonfiction about it, the next Civil War Dispatches from the American Future. Stephen Marsh joins me now. Stephen, you write that the United States is once again headed for civil war. You say January 6th wasn't a wake-up call but a rallying cry and that we've never faced an institutional crisis quite like this. You then say the choice is basic, reinvention or fall. So is secession the likely outcome? Well, I mean, the United States is a textbook case of a country headed for civil war. Um, you know, a recent study, show, a recent poll showed that only 20 percent of Americans have faith in their electoral system. And another poll showed that about 33 percent of them think violence against the government uh, can be justified. So in those kind of conditions where the threat of violence is so real and, and getting and growing, like, you know, threats against members of Congress increased 107 percent last year, uh, separ separation becomes a real option and, and and secession becomes something that I think you know the right has been talking about for years but it's probably time for the left to think about as well well I know that relative to Oregon and Idaho there's a portion of Oregon that says hey we'll go join Idaho uh, I made in uh, mm -hmm. reference at the outset to talking about Texas and California in fact we'll put up what you wrote on the screen I'll just cover the highlight that if Texas were a country it would have a GDP that is 10th in the world, slightly ahead of Canada. California, even larger. They recently passed Britain to become the fifth largest economy. Uh, didn't Ted Cruz also say that Texas could take NASA, the military, and the oil? To which my response is to say, okay, you can have NASA uh, and the oil and so forth, but you also need to take a piece of the debt, right? How would we whack up the debt? Well, Ted Cruz uh, does not really know what he's talking about. I mean, there are many Texas separatists who do know what they're talking about. But negotiations around separation are incredibly complex. And the Constitution of the United States, which basically makes any discussion of secession moot, there's just no, there's just no way to do it constitutionally, uh, makes it much harder. And of course, you know, all of this has to go through the UN. And you know, there's this whole idea that like Texas is going to, you know, lift their rifles and say, "Don't mess with Texas." But you know, that's all well and good until no one will land a plane in your airports and you can't exchange currency uh, with other countries. So yeah, it's a hugely elaborate bureaucratic process that requires actually a lot of goodwill, and that's why I think talking about it now, before violence gets really out of hand, is probably sensible because because there might be a way to negotiate it. Um, you know, while there's still good feelings, while there's still relatively okay, but, not but, our, a but lot I, of I, look, I, I've, I've, I've read the book. I appreciate the book, but like we're just spitballing here. This is kind of a barroom conversation. We don't really yes. think this is going to come to pass, do we? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think with the violence, when, when violence becomes the main way that politics happens, and when your political system, when you no longer feel you're living in a democracy, when you, when you're, the legitimacy of your institutions are, are really suspect, and when the divisions be become so marked, I mean, just listening to your show, you know, somebody calling you a communist for a, a, about a basic act of administration, not even agreement on what, whether January 6th was bad. Like, not even that level of agreement. Uh, you know, maybe it is when marriages get to this point, you sit the kids down and you say, you know, it's, it's sad, but it's over. Okay, what is Stephen Marsh's answer to my survey question? You, you prompted, you put this thought in my head. 50 years from now, uh, you know, I, I won't be here to see it. God willing, you will be. 50 years from now, will the U.S. map be the same as today. Put climate change out of your head. That's not what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. What's your answer? 
Uh, I don't think it could be the same. Like, I think it will change in the next 50 years. I, I mean, I try to stay pretty close in the book to what I really know, like the, the actual plans about the Civil War, like the best available models. Like, you know, I talked to 200 different researchers, and I like to stay very close to what they say because it's so easy to get caught up in exaggeration. But, you know, so I don't know what it will look like 50 years from now, but it won't be the same. It'll either be multiple countries okay. or, you know, maybe it'll have new states, but it, it will, it, it won't be the same. All right. We are soon to find out what the CNN audience thinks and whether they agree with Stephen Marsh. Thank you so much. I appreciate your, your willingness to come on and talk about the next civil war. My pleasure, Michael. Still to come, more of your best and worst tweets, Facebook, YouTube comments, and the final result of the first survey question of the year for us on this program. Go to Smirconish.com and tell me, 50 years from now, will the U.S. map be the same as it is today? Okay, time to see how you responded to the survey question of the week at Smirconish.com. 50 years from now, will the U.S. map be the same as it is today? Survey says... No, 50, pretty close though, and with a healthy number of votes, 16,389. I think I'm in the no category, but not as a doomsdayer. I went to the Philadelphia Museum of Art recently. There's a Jasper Johns exhibition. I stood in front of the iconic flag. There are only 48 uh, stars on that flag. Think about it, Hawaii, Alaska. Time for one social media, I think. What do we have, Catherine? Will the map of the United States change? In other words, is hyperpartisanship tearing apart the fabric of our nation and democracy? Pretty much the same question. Yeah, well, Joe, that is what I'm asking. I'm asking whether the hyperpartisanship that's tearing apart the nation, that's undeniable, will progress to such a point that some states choose to go their own way, or, or because I referenced Idaho and Oregon, some portions of states choose to go their own way. It just gets very complicated when you talk seriously about secession. I'm trying to say it deliberatively so I don't mix it up with my favorite TV show. I mean, you got issues pertaining to national defense. You've got issues pertaining to currency. Scalia once said that it was illegal. You've got some states like, how would we decide? Look at Florida. Who gets Brady and who gets Giselle? I don't know. I'll see you next week.